Takže dobrý den, vítejte u prvního historického rozhovoru a rovnou tady s takovouhle hvězdou. A začneme v angličtině a já vám tam potom hodí nějaký titulky. So, Shark, everyone knows you as a round the world rider on Yamaha R1. Yes. So, welcome here in Czech Republic and let's let's start because I don't know, I'm still shaking. <laughs> so, I prepared some questions. Yes. And let's let's go through them and we'll figure it out later. Everything. So, uh, let, for... me, let me first start something. To sell something. Everybody knows me as that the, ra uh, the round the world traveler with the R1. And uh, since the internet became big, people know about these things about other people. But I traveled a long time before that already. I'm getting to it. Ah, it's one of my questions. It. Yeah, I, one of I did questions. my I did my homework. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, let's start from the beginning. Yeah. When, when did you start riding a bike? I started when I was 11. I uh, had worked uh, enough money together, saved enough money together to buy a, an old scooter, old scooter from somebody. Uh, didn't ride at that moment, but that's when I actually started. All right. Mm -hmm. And later on, the became a scouter and cars and uh, motocross bike and stuff like that. So do, did you did you keep your first bike or do, do you know where it I ended don't, up? I don't, I don't even have a picture of it. Ah, that's a shame. Yes. <laughs> All right, perfect. So another question about the traveling. Uh, you, spoke, you spoke about it uh, during your presentation, but when was the first time you realized that you need to travel more than four weeks in a row, once a year? I think even before I started with the four weeks in a row, uh, that was always in me, uh, the, the desire to see the world. But also with a motorcycle or without a motorcycle? No, that was no, uh, not intention of being a motorcycle. I had it already as a kid that I would even go on my pedal bike and just pedal in the open, not knowing where to go. All right, all right, so... Uh, I had that already then. Uh, it all started um, when I uh, saw the documentary uh, from Australia about uh, Cyclone Tracy. Uh, that was somewhere in the 70s, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I was... Uh, by Sea Australia, and I thought I want to go there. Right. And at a certain moment, a friend of mine said, Don't you like to go uh, that we go to Australia, visit Australia? He never went there. <laughs> but <laughs> but I did. you did. I did. <laughs> All right. So that was the first big trip, yes. a journey? Yeah, half a year I was gone uh, from home. I sent my bike to Australia. Traveled around for four and a half months, 38,000 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Sent my bike back home and went as a backpacker to Indonesia. Oh, yeah. Indonesia, right. I liked, but the backpacking, that was. No, uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. You have to carry all the stuff with you. And... Yeah, you, you, you lose your independence. Yeah, that's exactly Yeah, that's exactly it. I was thinking about it. You have to wait for a bus or a hitchhike. You, you're not free to move. Yeah, and for some people that is freedom, but not if you are a bike rider. Yeah, yeah, because it could be like good opening statement when you arrive some somewhere with your bike. It's already you, they know that you're a traveler from far away. Yeah, yeah. It, well, not that not that I need that, but uh, it's just uh, I missed my wheels. All right. So getting to the uh, to your first motorcycle trip. So many people doesn't know. That your first round the world trip was on a Honda Fireblade. Yes, I called it to the other end of the world and back because I never physically got around the world. I went to the other <laughs> end and back. Yeah. So how, how long uh, did it take? Uh, that took three years. Three years. It was ninety three till ninety seven or? Uh, no, that was uh, ninety five till ninety eight. Ninety five till ninety eight. All right. So that's a that's a history. So uh, that my question, the the second one was. Uh, you choose Fireblade. So, did you have previously some uh, racing history, or you went to circuits racing, or something like that? No, no, no. The first circuit that I went on was uh, Phillip Island in Australia. All right. So, why did you choose Fireblade then? I like cornering. All right. I okay. still do. Yeah. So that's why I choose the R1. Yeah. All right. And I like I choose the bikes of my heart. I find that far more important than the right bike for the terrain. 
That didn't make sense. And if you don't mind what bike to take, take an all-road bike. But if you have already a bike that you love, take that one. Exactly. Why why would take a bike which you don't like and yes. which is maybe perfect on the road or maybe off road or everything. But it's not perfect if you're not happy on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like with the clothes, with everything. Yeah. With all the stuff you have. Okay, perfect. So this this one would be tough, maybe. You have traveled, I think, through more than 75 countries in total, maybe on, more. On our one trip, yes. All the, I all think I'm, one. I'm on 125 or something like that. 125, all right. So uh, so this could be a difficult question, but where did you like it the most and why? My favorite country is Russia. Uh, I call it unspoiled traveler's country. Mm -hmm. It still is. Even still, the Russians don't like know what's 2,000 kilometers further. Oh yeah, like a virgin country and country For traveling, and, yes. Yep. And the people are so hospitable. Uh, and they give you, if, if they have nothing to eat anymore except one cucumber, they give it to you. you yeah, know? that's true. Yeah. And the word comrade definitely comes from, from Russia. All right, all right. Yes, so that's my favorite country. I give you my favorite continent as well. That's South America. Mm -hmm. uh, easy traveling, lots of space. Uh, not too expensive. Nice it's beautiful. 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 Nice women as well. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I want to say that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, getting, getting to that later on. Is not bad with that too. Uh, um, so that's my favorite continent, and then my favorite country, nature-wise, absolutely New Zealand. New Zealand. All right. Uh, yeah. That's perfect. Okay. So uh, fair enough. Getting to the next question. Could you name someone you remember the most during your round the world trips who stuck in your memory till these days and why? Uh, we talk about women now? <laughs> Could be anyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, there is a nice story about uh, a British guy. Uh, he traveled around with his wife uh, on a uh, BMW, uh, the the car version, the older one, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, I got to uh, I was on the campsite in Argentina, and I just got a, had a shower, got out of the shower, came back, and the couple arrived on the motorbike, and he was looking at my bike and said, "Wow," he said, "You're traveling on the R1, you unbelievable." You know you're crazy. I said, yes, I know. Thank you for the compliment. He said, what? He said, there's one person he's even crazier than you. He did it on the fire blade. <laughs> I said, yes, yeah. that was me too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, you're traveling alone. So obviously my question is, did you feel lonely on the, on the way or did you, uh, did you went home from time to time? No, I never went back. Uh, I can be on my own very, very well. But uh, traveling alone means that there's always people talking to you. Always. And sometimes I actually try to escape from it. I uh, want uh, to be alone, alone, yeah, alone. Yeah, you want to be alone, but not for long, but, but for yeah, sometime, yeah. to have some rest and not telling the same thing uh, all over again. Yeah. Which is just part of what you do, but sometimes it's enough. Well, in some countries, I guess you're like a celebrity when you go to Iran on R1 or whatever big bike. Yeah. You get stopped by so many people and ask the same question again, 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 thousand times a day. Yeah, but I, I make advantage out of it. I had postcards for sale. <laughs> and uh, then I said, uh, people ask, oh, wow, what are you doing? I said, here, look these postcards they tell what i do wow wow All by right. the way i sell them to make a living oh well, how much are they that's how i make a living uh, made a living we were joking that if we take at least one dollar for every picture in iran we would make fortune and yeah, we can yeah. continue for two another years yeah traveling you so, yeah. can but i did with the postcards that's cool they brought me yeah. about one and a half year travel money and uh, also, uh, I could buy a, a new uh, computer, a new professional video camera, a new yeah. photo camera, because that was worn out all. So oh, I, yeah, had to, I had to change yeah, things. Yeah. So uh, all from those postcards. Nice. That's perfect. It could be inspiration for for yeah, it, other it, people, maybe. It, it doesn't work in uh, in Europe, for example. Mm -hmm. But it does in the United States, absolutely. And uh, or take badges with you. 
Yeah. They are light in weight. Uh -huh. All right. uh, another thing that I did uh, at that time, YouTube and everything was not big, but uh, I could make my own DVDs mm -hmm. and I had about 300 pictures on there. I, di I gave a slideshow and people said, oh, wow, I want to like, I like to have the slides. Yeah. And I thought, well, that's business. So I put the slideshow on there. And the, and the pictures and sold them for twenty five dollars each. <laughs> so I you went sold to Walmart, the to, Walmart yeah. to buy uh, stack DVDs and burn them in my free time and sold. That's them. awesome, awesome, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's nice. And I went to events, for example, in the in in the United States, and there were days that I had one thousand dollar a day. Hmm. Glad Th to hear that. Right? I, yeah, that's why I said I, I I made one and a half year traveling money with uh, in that way. All right. Well, that's perfect. Well, getting to the time when you were traveling, because it was 90s and the beginning of of 2000, so there was still like a no internet available available yes. everywhere. Yeah. So do you think, compared to these days, if the traveling is easier right now or back then, if you get right now all the information on the internet, but on the other hand, there's a lot of people everywhere, yes. instead of getting no information whatsoever and be alone some beautiful places yeah i would i actually way you know talk about i i thought about it uh, this week quite a lot because i think there's a i can actually hold a presentation because i st still had the old-fashioned way traveling and the new way of traveling and the difference in between mm. in between could be interesting I, yeah. it could be an interesting uh, presentation because a lot of people don't even know uh how things work like that i mean you you were sending faxes and, and stuff like that or post re, post restaurant mail. Yeah, yeah. So, so a lot of people don't know that you had the mail sent to the to the post office of Cairo, for example, and there you collect your mail and stuff like that. I never thought about it till I met a guy in South America, and he told me that uh, in 1976 he traveled uh, the Pan American Highway with his Volkswagen Combi something, and he was uh, calling his wife. Uh, from embassy to embassy and he said that it cost him 80 80 dollars a minute or something like that but back then dollar was much higher yeah. than, than right now so then I thought okay that must be difficult back then yeah but on the other side you don't have information about let's say nice places you, you so you can miss yes. a lot of things yes and you don't have a Google translator if you don't know the languages yeah so yeah. but that made it interesting not knowing the language yeah, that's a good uh, advantage. Yeah, uh, for example, a nice story about that is uh, I had already in the last trip a GPS, mm -hmm. but the GPS don't didn't have roads on it. It was just an arrow pointing yeah. at yeah. where you what you put in, and you could not go on the internet and find uh, a house and uh, with the address in the street. That was all not there. So uh, then I heard about Timbuktu, and I thought it did. It was, I thought it was a fairy tale, and then I found out that Timbuktu does exist. Mm -hmm. So I put my mind on Timbuktu, and I found it on the map. And I put a piece of paper on the map, made a drawing and a cross on the map, so I could calculate roughly what the coordinates were of Timbuktu. Ooh. Because you have the length and the and the, the degrees on the True, map, yeah. but then I had to calculate it, like an azimuth or something, on the yeah, direction. I, and I I calculated the coordinates of uh, Timbuktu. Oh, so it was first GPS. So you, you and there was three so kilometers in, off. In I was three kilometers off. <laughs> Sometimes it's so, a coincidence, coincidence that so, you arrived. To yeah, someplace. because there was no road, there was no road to Timbuktu. Well, there was a road which was not doable because it was the rain season. Yeah. So I, I went uh, straight under Timbuktu on the tarmac road and then drove two days through the Sahel, mm -hmm. Sahel, no road, not following a road, just the point on the GPS that I had. You can imagine the people like from behind there's, there's a shark coming on a motorcycle. No, there are the no people uh, behind uh, <laughs> yeah. because there is no road. Yeah, there's no road. Yeah. The people walking with donkeys and that was about all that, that you saw there. Well, yeah, back then, probably right now it's... it's very very different not, right not there yeah. huh? not there not there yeah no because I, I i think for example in south america is changing every year dramatically there's a lot of people traveling there especially from states yeah there's so, a lot of people traveling so it's changing very quickly yeah that's true all right so 
let's proceed to the next next questions. Do you have another bikes in your garage a part of R1? The Fireblade. The Fireblade. Ah, the Fireblade. And I have uh, the uh, the R1 that I uh, built uh, uh, modified to go on the Polar Ice in 2013. So the Arctic one. No, no, the, uh, no ah, that's yeah, another one. one. Ah, and right. now I have Arctic one, the, so the bike that I'm building. Something. Yes, the okay. bike that I'm building now for the North Pole. All right, all right. I still thought it's the same motorcycle, just slightly modified. No, no, no because I keep that other bike like it was, because it has its history as well. That's true, yeah. And uh, the bike you're going to the North Pole with is, uh, is the new R1? or It's the same R1 as the one that I am uh, traveled around the world. So the same 2001 model. model. 2001 carbureted bike. Carbureted bike, all right. Okay, perfect. Do you, do you drive a car as well? If I need to. If yes. you need to, okay. I don't have one. Yeah. Uh, I have my Iveco van. I can put four bikes in there if I go to events or something. Uh, mm -hmm. But over here I came with the bike. I yeah. prefer to go with the bike. But. Yeah, all right. So uh, you already mentioned the, the North Pole expedition. Tell, tell us more about it. Just Since many times ago, the North Pole is in my mind even before the R1 trip started mm -hmm. and I thought actually the R1 trip will give me more uh, that people know me better and yeah. uh, what makes it easier to find the finances for the North Pole trip mm -hmm. and uh, since I got back from the R1 trip I did winter rides I went to the North Cape in winter I went to the north of Alaska in winter I went on the polar ice uh, in 2013, that was the last big, bigger thing that I did. And uh, now I'm actually lost. What was I telling? That you did basically tested. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm building that uh, that R1 yeah. now, for Arctic One now. Are you building for, for the you're North building by yourself? Yes, or? I yeah. built it myself, but of course I can. I don't have the uh, expertise in all these things, so I, I go to people who have, and then... Uh, you have to they... tell me later on how you made the, the big tire. The big tire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know how to do it. Yes. <laughs> all right, so uh, you heard that Shark is going to North Pole, so uh, can people support you somehow? Tell them. Yes, uh, people can go on my website and go to uh, the North Pole. Uh, my website is R1 Goes Extreme, or just Google Shark Lucasa and you will get there too. All right, so I put some links below. Yes, so fine. Uh, you can, they can go to my website and uh, go to the North Pole trip and then to the support uh, page. Mm -hmm. And on the support page, they uh, they can support me and uh, they can have their name on the flag. The flag goes with me to events like it is now over here. It goes with me to presentations. It goes with me when I do the testing. And of course, it goes with me to, when the, North I, to the North Pole. This doesn't finance my trip, but it finances the build of the bike. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm doing now the build of the bike with the money that I get out of the flag. Uh, people can get on, on there already for 10 years. They can get on there for 20 years. They can have a rectangle for 100 years. And of course, they can do even more mm -hmm. than that. Perfect. Yeah, That's yes. perfect opportunity for you guys if you want to go to the North Pole with him. So. Uh, Check the page and definitely support the guy. Cause yeah, I, like I said, I, I, I have already the option for 10 euros, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, actually very low uh, amount is. of money. And because I want to make it possible for anybody to to support, to become part of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's a brilliant idea, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the last last question. Uh, a lot of people want to do something like you, obviously, and many of them are scared. So maybe they don't know the languages, maybe they don't know how to repair a motorcycle, or scared to be alone in a foreign country, maybe thousands of other reasons. Would you have any advice or message for them to encourage them to go on, on some trip? Follow your heart. And you can do whatever you want. Then. All right, that's perfect. So, that would be it. I got the last three questions I would like to ask everyone. Yeah. So what did you, let's say, let's say the, the R1 round the world trip. What did you learn on that, on that trip? To 
listen to your heart and uh, that keeps you alive as well and that you can put pain away we have pain when you cut yourself you have pain but if there's no time for pain you shut it off you just say it's it's here and yes all right so did the did the trip change you and if yes how it made me far more uh tranquil ah tranquil yeah, yeah relaxed yeah all right so the last one uh would you do anything different if you now know all the things you went through can't really answer this question I think we all do that in in, in life uh, with all the experiences in life you learn from it mm -hmm. and you adapt if you don't do that you do think wrong anyway so uh, can't really tell yeah well, well one thing that I didn't uh, did wrong was I left with original suspension <laughs> all right yeah. uh, I, I did that uh, because I wanted to uh, keep the bike as standard as possible because that was Yamaha gave me the bike but that was wrong and uh, I changed it later on for uh, for hyper pro yep. and that was the best thing I, I ever did and I thought what have I ridden around on a camel <laughs> okay a little ad <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah why not why not okay yeah. So the last last uh, four questions, it's gonna be a, a small game. I just uh, ask you a question, and we have to answer it very quickly. It's one or another. I depend. It depends. Uh, I answer it. How I will try, but I will. All right. All right. No. So do don't think about way. it. You know, it's just I, one I, word. I always do things my way. So Honda or Yamaha? Yamaha. Winter or summer? Summer. You, uh, United States or Russia? Russia. Fast or slow? Fast. Perfect. All right. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Please pleasure you. visit the page. Uh, I wish you all the best for your next travels. I will definitely follow you on, on Facebook or something like that. And we keep my fingers crossed so everything goes well. All right, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you.